For those who are familiar with the Ultrafire 501B, you'll know that it takes um, an 18650 uh, laptop battery. The, uh, the 18650 laptop battery is, is um, called an 18650 purely because it's 18 millimeters uh, wide by 65 millimeters long and it's, um, it's cylindrical. Now, you can buy these on a lot of websites like eBay and direct from China, but they're actually quite difficult to get hold of uh, good ones at a reasonable price. And the reason for saying that is a lot of the 3 amp or, or 2.9 amp ones or the 2.7 amp hour um, cells are only really measured at something like 350 milliamps. So when you run them in something like um, uh, an XML T6 like, uh, like this one here, which is gonna be running close to two amp, you'll find that your cells don't really last very long and you're looking at run times of about half an hour. What I've found is that a lot of the cells inside laptop batteries are actually 18650s. I've got here a Lenovo uh, laptop battery and I think, judging by its size and shape, it's got roughly six cells inside that. So how do you get inside these um, things and how do you actually get the cells out safely? One of the things to, to be careful of when you're, if you're having to buy your laptop battery is you want to make sure that the, the cells inside here are, the, are, the, are really the best ones you can get your hands on. As an example here, I've got a variety of different batteries that came out of laptops and some of them are like this one are close to about 1.8 amp hour um, whilst this one here is, is closer to 2.5 amp hour. So you really want the best ones you can get for your money. Fortunately, most laptop um, batteries actually have the amp hour uh, written on the battery itself. Now, it'll either be in um, amp hours, as is the case of this one, where it's 11.1 volts at 5.6 amp hour, but it also has the, the, the watts equivalent in there. Sometimes you just have the watts and you have to use uh, uh, mathematics to, um, to work out the, um, the conversion of watts to amps. So based on the fact that I think that there are six cells in here and that they run at, uh, uh, this battery pack runs at 11.1 volts, that I'm expecting the, this battery pack here to be three serial, which is three batteries, nose to tail, nose to tail, to get from 3.7 volts, which is what they run at typically, to 11.1 volt by two parallel which will give me the 5.6 amp hour. So I can take the voltage and I can, I can divide it by 3.7 and I get three, so I know it's three serial, and I can look at the amp hourage and I can divide that by two to, to, to realize that there's these, the cells that are inside here are probably gonna be around 2.8 amp hour, which given the fact that I'm actually gonna charge them up to about 4.2 volts um, over a period of time, um, actually means I'll probably be getting close to 2.8, 2.9 amp hour out of them, which is pretty good for a battery pack that uh, was given to me free of charge. Important to remember that the battery itself um, will contain unprotected uh, cells. So if you're considering torches that take two or three um, cells, you need to be really careful. And actually, I wouldn't advise that you ran unprotected cells in a high power um, torch where it takes more than one cell. Um, the protection circuit inside a laptop battery does a number of things. It has um, thermal protection where it mon monitors the temperature of the batteries. It will have um, shortage protection, it'll have over discharge protection and it'll have cutoff protection to prevent the batteries from being damaged. Once we've taken the batteries out of this, um, out of this pack, all that circuitry is gone and we're left with an unprotected cell. So it's really important to realize that an unprotected cell needs a little bit of management when you run them in the lights. Now, all that really means is that you, you mustn't run them until they go flat, because if you run them to the point where the LED dims, you will have damaged the battery. So just to be aware of that, the simple way of doing it is to just work out roughly what the amp power is, is there, either checking the volts after half an hour of run on your, on your light um, and working out roughly how much power there is left in the in the battery or just just get into the precaution of changing the light that the batteries and the lights before they actually go flat um, most batteries that are put together are put together with um, a seal um, around the edges and that is basically where we attack the battery and inside there will just be a simple um, glued in seal seal there they're not designed to be serviceable so all you really need uh, to do this job 
is a decent sized chisel. I've got a pretty rusty one here um, that's gonna, gonna give me some weight. A screwdriver to get the batteries out and um, either a, a pair of scissors or um, a pair of wire cutters like I've got here to um, to cut the tabs as to, to free the batteries up. Now it's important to know when you when you actually get them out you're going to have um, little bits of solder tabs on the end. Now you can peel these off if you're careful or you can just flatten them down just but be aware they are really sharp and I must admit um, more often than not I end up cutting my fingers when I'm doing this so uh, it's all uh, it's all worth it. So what I'm going to do is just basically uh, work my screw, work my chisel in there, um, just to break apart the battery at any point really. I'm just picking a random point in there, just to break that seal in there. Hopefully, I'm not going to uh, uh, dig a hole in my table while I'm doing that. But we shall hopefully, hopefully, not have that result. Now you, you don't have to have um, IBM, uh, sorry, uh, Lenovo um, packs in here. Dell use a similar sort of technology, so do HP. Most full-size laptops, and I mean um, laptops that aren't sub-notebooks, use battery packs of this kind of size. Um, some of the sub-notebooks use the mobile phone style of battery. But as you can see, I'm already getting my way into this battery. Um, it does appear that um, no two battery packs are the same, but uh, I suspect that's more of a reflection on the uh, manufacturer's uh, desire not to uh, save you money replacing them. It is really at this point that I have to start working fairly quickly. Um, because the moment I start flicking these out, there is a risk that I can get shorts. And there are my 18650 batteries, which um, as soon as I've cleaned them up by taking the tabs off as best I can, I tend to use a twisting action just to pull them off. Yep, it's pretty good. I must admit I've never seen ones this colour before. So like I said, I'll patch up anything that's uh, damaged. The way the, um, the batteries are work, works, the outside of the cell is the negative, so you do have to make sure that any exposed uh, surfaces are properly taped up. But for my use, for torches, for, for mountain biking, um, I tend to wrap them in insulation anyway, so this, this, the plastic on this one is a little bit weak anyway, so I'll have to take that one up. Right. So this one here has 3.75 volts in it, so that's actually a fully charged battery. That's perfect. And that's a good condition battery as well. That one's pretty good. After a few charges, they will actually come up to 4.2 volts. Looking good so far. So there you go guys, for a very small amount of effort and a favour from the guy in our uh, PC department, I've now got myself six very good quality uh, laptop cells that I can use in my lights. I'll wrap a bit of tape around them so they fit well and these will power my lights perfectly happily. Um, Just like that. There we go. Thank you for watching.